everyone and welcome to this video in which we will be making short corded stays. It's the next part of my Reach to See costume of which we already made the chemise. I'm going to make these stays with Laughing Moon pattern number 115 which is the same one that we used for the chemise but today we will be making the short corded stays. For these stays I already made a mock-up. I'm not going to show you the entire process of that because then I'll be doing the same thing twice and I don't think that's very interesting to look at. So what I will show you is the adjustments that I had to make to the uh, to the mock-up, but for the rest we will just be making the stays as if it was a single garment. So let's get crafting. I'm going to start by tracing all the pieces on pattern paper. I prefer that over cutting stuff out. This way I can come back to the same pattern later and make it in a larger or a smaller size. First I'll be tracing the bust gusset. This pattern size was not determined as the other pieces, but rather by subtracting the underbust from the overbust size. Which, for me, came down to a size of about 7 inches. And about that. This pattern works in inches, while I'm used to working in centimeters. So a lot of converting will ensue. For this pattern I am right in between a size 8 and 10. Doubtly 8 and 12, um, which means that I will have to draw in between sizes, aka I have to draw from one line to the other. So that's going to be fun. Because this is the back piece, I don't really know what the underbust line is. So I guess I have no idea. This is probably some attachment line, so I'll keep that at the 8 and then flare out from there, I guess. Or something like that. We'll see. Something like that. It's now about four days later, and here we are with a mock up of the stays. Um, right now it's boned with just a single piece of wood uh, because otherwise this wasn't fitting properly. Um, I have put in some eyelets and a piece of string. Um, but of course in the final thing there will be more eyelets and everything. So just for a very first fit, I think it fits actually quite good. Um, I did have to make some extra darts at the cups because otherwise I got really pointy boobs and that's not something that I want. Um, it just it was a bit too wide here. I know that in the end we'll have a cord around it but still um, I made a few darts here just to make the fit a tiny bit better. But overall I think it fits quite nicely and actually it's quite comfortable to wear. Um, well, this is of course a rather unboned, uncorded version, but still, I think it's quite good. I'm not entirely sure yet about the gap in the back here, um, because I can't really see that myself. So also by watching this footage I can determine whether I want to uh, make the gap a bit shorter or not. With this we can go and start on the actual stays, but before I can start on those I have to go and get some fabric. So I folded each gusset over at the edges to make it more of a going out and then going inward shape so that this top edge will again be a bit shorter than the middle part which makes it sit more round and be less pointy. The gussets at the side I only took in on this side and not on that side. Um, well it fits okay here and I mean less taking in is better. Next up is fabric cutting. I cut the fabric at the same time as the chemise, so I tried to cut as fabric saving as possible from the remaining edges of the chemise cutouts. This means the cutting layout as suggested in the pattern was ignored completely. For these days the outside fabric and the lining are both the same fabric. So you won't see a real difference while, while I'm working between the lining and the outside fabric, but just so you know. We're going to start by inserting the gussets. The gussets will end up at the location of these lines. So first I'll be slashing them, stay stitching around the edge and then inserting the gusset.
After cutting along the slash lines, the seam allowance was folded over to the wrong side. From half a centimeter at the top, to none at the bottom. Then it is time to insert the gusset into the stays. This is the outside of the stays that will be seen, and this is the inside with the pressed open slash lines. We will first attach the gussets with a 5mm seam allowance on one side, then on the other side. Flip the entire thing over and then top stitch as close as possible to the slash line. We're going to stitch to an inch from the bottom. After stitching down the gusset on both sides, it looks something like this. And on the front, it looks something like this. As you can see, the seam allowances are poking up a bit, so we will stitch that down. Uh, we will top stitch it as close as we can to the edge. And after top stitching, it looks like this. The seam allowance is neatly held down, and we top stitch from top all the way to the bottom, kept the needle in, pivoted it around, and then stitched the way back. This way, the last inch that we did not stitch with the second stitch line also secures this bottom flap. The fact that uh, the stitch line ends here and does not continue, we will make that invisible later by adding some flossing here at the bottom. So this is what it looks like for a single gusset. Now we've got three more to go on this side and then we also have four more to go on the lining part. And a bit of stitching later, all eight gussets are in. We have the gussets for the outside and the lining part. This is the moment where I trace all the markings that are relevant for the boning and the cording onto all of the panels. For each of these, I trace with tailor's chalk onto the lining piece on the side that will end up on the inside of the stays. And next up, we're going to work on the back of the stays by attaching the side and the back together. Now that the backs are stitched to the sides, we can match them up. So we have one set on one side and we have another set on... Wait a second. Yeah, I just... I stitched two same sides. Um, that means I will have to unpick one and re-sew it. Um, give me a second, I will re-sew this. So, as I was saying, we can now match up the outer parts with the lining parts. And then we will cut the seam allowance. On the lining side we will cut one side of the seam allowance to half a centimeter. And on the other side, outside, we will cut the other half of the seam allowance to half a centimeter. Later on, this will help with the cording that will go over the seam in some cases. So that means that if we cut this one to half a centimeter... That means that right now, if we have both parts and we put them on top of each other, The seam allowance is cut short on one side and cut short on the other side. And after this we will start on the cording, but before I do that I will press the seams open and all the parts will be zigzag stitched around the edges because I will be handling these quite a lot during the cording and as you can see it is already fraying a tiny bit and I don't want the corset to fray too much while we're cording. So first let's do that. And then we'll start on the cording. The seams have been pressed open and the pieces have been stitched all around and it's time for the first mammoth task of these stays. So now it is time to pin all the pieces together and actually stitch all those cording lines. I actually made a practice piece to see if the cording lines work as they are on the pattern. I first made them in the original width which was about three millimeters and the needle that I'm going to use, which is this giant thing, is not fitting through channels of three millimeters wide. So I made my channels a bit wider and now the needle can pass through and with this length I think the cording will go quite smoothly. So this is for the, the back and the side. 
times two. And then we also have to do that for the front, which also has quite a lot of channel holes that need to be sewn on. Now we get to the time of lots of repetitive channel sewing while binge watching a series or TV program. In my case, due to some problems with my back, I cannot sew for too long in one sitting. So I had to take a break between every set of channels. With that in mind, it came down to about 4 or 5 days per panel. So it has been 4, maybe even 5 weeks since I started sewing the channels and I'm almost done sewing them. So we can start cording, which as you can see I already made a start on this back panel. I only need 3 more cords and then this panel is done. But I will show you how I cord. Uh, these panels. Um, there are two different ways that I cord these, depending on whether I can completely use this or not. Um, this is a really nice long needle, uh, which means that, well, I can get quite a lot of distance in here. The end is so wide that if I want to poke it through the fabric, I completely destroy the fabric basically. So I can only use this fully uh, for channels that have both ends open. So let me show you how I cord it that way when I can use the needle fully, which is rather simple. I just grab my cord and I pull the needle through. like that. For channels that end in another channel, so the cord has to poke through the fabric, I use the big needle to open up the channel, like that. I poke it through slightly, like I just make a hole but I'm trying not to make the hole too big so I won't actually break the fabric. Just leave that in there. And I have this, well, smaller needle. It still has a relatively big eye. Unfortunately, I had nothing in between here. So this is make do. We thread the cord through the needle like that. This is the moment where I pull out the big needle. Then the channel has been opened up slightly and I can insert smaller needle and this hole that I now created with the big needle still not big enough so for that I grab an awl carefully open it up a bit more and then thread it through Now, it still requires a lot of wiggling to get it all out. Oh, this hole is definitely too small, so I pull it back a bit. Grab the awl again. And pull it through again. And I keep repeating this until I can pull the thread through. Like that. And then we repeat that 17 more times and the back panel will be fully corded. After all of the cording is done, we can cut off the loose ends of the cords. Cut the ends close to the openings and stuff the remainder of the thread into the channels. After a while, the holes close up surprisingly well. And that's it for the first part of this stay making. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. And see you in the next part, where we will put everything together and end up with a finished set of stays. As usual, if you have any suggestions concerning anything, I'd love to hear them in the comments. And see you in the next part!